Hey boys and girls and welcome to Faith Flight School. I'm Captain Tyler. Here at Faith Flight School we learn about the Word of God and how to be doers of it. When we're doers of God's Word and what He shows us to do, we will receive all the benefits and all the blessings that God has for us. Well today here at Faith Flight School we're going to be doing a review lesson. How many of you remember the My Sheep series that we did? Okay, quite a few of you, quite a few of you. Well, we're going to be looking at that again. We're going to be reminding ourselves of Psalm 23 and what it says, the benefits that we have as his sheep. Are you ready to get started? Let's head to the hangar for praise and worship. Just a moment. Each other. 
is it? Offering. It's offering time. Raise your hand if you're already ready to give. That's good. That's good. Did you know that since you're ready, that you're being a doer of the Word of God? Did you know that it says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 18, that we're to be ready to give? Everybody say, ready to give. Say, willing to share. Willing to share. You know, have you ever watched a race? Someone steps up to the starting line, and what are they? They're ready for the race. And when that sound goes off, what do they do? Run. They run as fast as they can. We should be the same way when we're giving. We should always be ready on the starting line, ready to give. It also says that we should be willing to share. How many of you have ever shared something of yours with someone else? It's so important to share. Did you know that's the heart of God? Everybody put your hands over your heart. That's the very heart of God. He's always ready to give to you and He's always willing to share with you. How many of you have been blessed with a lot of good things? Lots of good toys? Lots of good clothes. That's awesome. The Bible says that when we have been blessed so much that we should be ready to give. At a moment's notice, we're always ready. And we're also willing to share. Have you ever felt unwilling to share? Have you ever felt like, mm, I don't know if I want to share this or not. Well, I have a few toys right here. These are some of my favorite toys. This is a, a loader. It's a really cool toy. Would you like to play with this? Raise your hand if anybody would like to, to play with this. I know, very, very cool. And then I also have this train. How many of you like trains? I like trains too. Trains are so fun. And what about cars? Who likes cars? 
I like cars too. You know, when you have all of these toys, I have three toys here. Um, they're so fun. Sometimes I try to play with them all at the same time. But there's other times when I need to be willing to share. Let's say I have a friend beside me and they don't have any toys and it comes up in my heart. You should let them play with one of your toys. What should I do? What should I do? That's right. I should give that toy to them and let them play with it. Maybe while they're playing with their train, I can play with my car. I'm still blessed, right? I've got a lot of good things. It's awesome to be blessed, but it's even more awesome to bless others. We need to have that same heart that God has for us. Where we're ready, get on the line. Everybody stand up. Stand at the starting line. On your marks, get set, give. That's what God's asking us to do. And then also, not just to give, but to share. To share from all of the good things that God has blessed you with. Everybody say this confession with me. Are you ready? Get on the line. Say, I am, I am. ready to give, ready to give. And, willing to sow. and willing to sow. Awesome. Great job. Kids, it's confession time, but I'm gonna need some help today. Can I help? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, everyone, stand up and get ready. Here we go. Repeat after me. I am. I am. The righteousness. The righteousness. Of God. Of God. In Christ. In Christ. Awesome, awesome. Now, let's get ready for the motions. I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm bright. Good looking. Very rich and a major blessing. Good job. Now let's grab our doers. <clears throat> I'm a doer, I'm a doer, I'm a doer of the word of God. Awesome. Now let's grab our manuals. Let's get our Bibles here. Oh, thank you, thank you. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is the word of God. It is the word of God. I am, I am what God says I am. What God says I am. I can do, I can do what God says I can do. What God says I can do. I can be, I can be what God says I can be. What God says I can be. Good job everybody. Good job. Hi boys and girls. I have a scripture for us to read. So turn with me uh, to John chapter 10 and we're going to be looking at verse 14. And in my Bible here, we've got red letters. You know what that means? That means anytime you see red letters, that means that Jesus said these words. So we're looking at quotes here. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. And then let's jump down to uh, verse 27. More red letters here. So we know that this is Jesus saying this. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So. Boys and girls, Jesus is saying he is the good shepherd and that we are his sheep. We hear his voice and we follow him. And so he always wants us to have exactly what we need to be well taken care of. And all we have to do is hear his voice and follow him. And oh, I have a game that's going to help us understand this a little better. Okay, I'm going to play an animal sound. And then I just want you to tell me what animal makes that sound. Okay, here's the first one, ready? I think I've heard that one before. What do you think that is? That's right. That's a dog. Good job. Okay, here's another one. How about that one? What do you think that is? Yeah, that's a cow. Awesome job. Okay, last one. What kind of animal makes that sound? 
You're right. Yeah, a cat. Y'all are so quick. Now, that seemed really easy for y'all. Why do you think that is? You were able to say what the animal was just by hearing it, not even by seeing it. Well, that was because you recognized it. You were familiar with it and you've maybe heard it before. So it was easy for you to say what it was. Uh, and that is exactly how it is with us and hearing the voice of the Good Shepherd. The more time that we spend with the Lord in his word, getting quiet and talking to the Lord, then the easier and easier it is for us to recognize his voice because we're familiar with it. And you know, God is so good. He wants to talk with us. He wants us to get quiet and spend time with him and know uh, everything about our day and everything going on in our lives because he cares for us. He's our good shepherd. And you know, the Lord created all of us and he knows everything that we like, that we need, that we want, all of our desires of our hearts. And he always wants to lead us into good things. And he's just so good. And all we have to do is follow him. And okay, let's do one more animal sound. This is just too fun, ready? What do you think this is? It's a lion, good job. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Dr. No, that's K-N-O, Faith Flight School's resident expert in all things factual, scientific, and fun. It's so good to see you again, boys and girls. Now, I have something very fun and interesting. This is a simple little science experiment. Now, what I have here is a water bottle, which is filled with water in the bottom here, it's red, and a type of cooking oil up on top. Now, one thing to note is that the molecules in the oil are actually bigger than the molecules in the water, meaning they can't pack quite as densely. Thus, the oil is lighter than the water and it stays on top, it floats. Now, I've sealed it because I don't want to make a mess and clean all that up, so we'll just keep it nice and tidy in the bottle. Now, this water bottle is going to represent the spirit and flesh of really any child of God. We'll say this is the flesh down here and this is the spirit up on top, right? Now, as you can see, they're very clearly separated. However, if I begin to shake this bottle, well, let's just say you're a child of God and you're, well, you're, you're feeding the flesh. You're doing things in the natural. You're going about your day with your friends and your family. You're going out to the park. You're watching movies. You're playing games. You're, you're having a good time. You're not really feeding your spirit. Well, when it comes time to hear from the Holy Spirit and you have something you need to ask the Lord on, you need direction, well, it's... Can you tell which one's the spirit and which one's the flesh? Because I can't. That's, that's very well mixed up. And see, boys and girls, that's what happens. Sometimes we let things in the world, things in the natural, things of the flesh, get in the way and muddy the waters, so to speak. But even as I'm speaking, as I let it sit and get still, you'll begin that it actually begins to uh, take a, a bit of a separation here. Let me put it right here, yes. You can see that it's actually already beginning to separate. Now, boys and girls, it's the same with us. When we take time to slow down, to focus on the Holy Spirit, to listen to our Good Shepherd, well, we, we read our word, we, we go to church, we spend time praying or praising or worshiping the Lord. You'll notice that as we do that, the things of the flesh and the things of the spirit, they become more clear. It's easier to hear. Oh, but well, if I start to do more things in the flesh, well, uh-oh, it starts to get more mixed up again. Well, okay, that's, that's all right. We'll get back to it. We'll take a moment to slow down. We'll focus on the Holy Spirit. We'll listen to the Good Shepherd. We'll pray and we'll seek Him and we'll praise Him and we'll spend time with family and friends in the Word and in church. And the longer we take to be still, and focus and listen to him, the easier and more clear those things will become. And this is a good thing for any of us to do, to train ourselves, to take a good amount of time to slow down and be still, to be quiet, know that he is the Lord and that he will help us and that he'll help us to see and, and in time, in time, it's not an instantaneous thing, but in time, we'll be able to hear him more clearly than ever. Now, boys and girls, I want to read to you a scripture in our manuals. This is a promise given by Jesus, the head of the church, our good shepherd. He said this himself. We have this as a promise. It says in John 14, 26, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. 
Now, boys and girls, you can see that as we've taken time to sit and let our spirit hear him, you can see it's already clearly distinguished. Boys and girls, I encourage you, take time to slow down, get still, and listen to the Good Shepherd, because I promise you, he will not lead you astray. You'll be able to hear him clearly. Hi, boys and girls. I wanted to come back one last time to review Psalm 23 with you. In the last several weeks, we have been learning all about our Good Shepherd and hiding God's Word in our hearts. We have such a good Father, and He loves us so much. Let's say Psalm 23 one more time together with all of the actions that you've learned. So stand up and say it with me. You ready? You can do it. I know you can. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Wow, you guys did a really excellent job. The Good Shepherd leads his children to all these great places. When we hear his voice and follow what he tells us, he takes care of us in every way. I want you to expect to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd God has all the answers and he desires us to hear his voice so he can lead us to all the good things he has prepared. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Good. How many of you want to hear from the Lord? You guys want to hear from God? Yeah. It's important, right? I know I want to hear from him more and more and more. Do you think that God, you, only super smart people can hear from God? that he judges you. So I got a little example. So take a look at this here. Who knows what this is? It's a report. Well, it says it. Report card. How many of you guys have ever got a report card? Now, it looks pretty good, right? Does anybody see anything that stands out on it? Yes? There's, uh-oh. D is not a very good grade, is it? No. Yeah. Now, class, class, D is, we would want to get that grade up, right? If this was our report card, I mean, some of these look good, you know, reading is good. I mean, B's can be improved, right? But that's the one that's kind of like, ugh, I don't like that. Do you think God grades us like this in order for us to hear from him? No, I don't think so either. Well, I've got a scripture for you, or a couple of scriptures. The first one is in 1 Samuel... 16, verse 7. 1 Samuel 16, 7. And this is the later, it's like the second half of the verse. And the Lord says, For the man looks, or sorry, for the Lord does not see as man sees. For the man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Now this report card, is this, is this an outward thing? It is, isn't it? This is a physical, this is a thing of the world, right? Does the God look at that? No, he looks at the, our what? Our heart. our heart. So if we have a heart towards God, even if we get a bad report card, that doesn't mean that we're not smart enough to hear from him. Even if you're struggling in a subject, you know, reading or writing or whatever, that doesn't mean you can't hear from God. If you have the right heart towards him, then you can hear from him. Isn't that exciting? And then when you can hear from God, clearly, He'll help you out with those subjects, and He'll help you bring those grades up. Okay, I got another scripture, one more. This is in Revelation, towards the back of the book. Uh, Revelation chapter 3. 
And this is in the Amplified. All right, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears and listens to and heeds, which means does what they say, does what he says, heeds my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and I will eat with him and he will eat with me. So how many of you guys have ever had anybody knock on your door? Well, Jesus is doing that to our hearts. And it's pretty simple response when somebody knocks on your door, as long as it's somebody that you want in, what do you do? You go and you open it, right? And then you let them in. And if it's your friend, they come in and they might eat with you. Well, the Lord is knocking on the door of our hearts and all we have to do is let him in and then he will come in and he will speak to us. So even if we're having a tough time at school or we feel like we're not smart in this area or that area, the Lord doesn't look at that. He doesn't look on the outside. He looks at the heart. Boys and girls, when you believe in Jesus and ask him to be the good shepherd of your life, he comes and lives in your heart, and He is with you always to help you and to guide you in everything. Now, boys and girls, if you want to ask Jesus and let Him be your Good Shepherd, it's as simple as this. Just pray this prayer with me, all right? Father God, I believe in you. I believe you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I believe he rose again and is alive right now. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, boys and girls, that's amazing. Thank you, good job. And now, Jesus is your good shepherd. And the best part, that means you're his sheep. And the Good Shepherd loves and takes care of his sheep, and his sheep know his voice. Did you guys enjoy today's lesson? Did you learn a lot? Good, that's important. Well, I want to encourage you. Remember the things that you've learned here this week. Make sure you're a doer of them. Go back and remind yourself all throughout the week of what you've learned here today. As you do that, it'll get deep down into your heart, and that'll be what comes out through your actions and through your speech and through what you do. And that's where you'll receive the benefits and blessings that God has for you. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Captain Tyler, and I'll see you next time.